Before I get into this story, I should make it clear that this happened in August 2022. My name is Jaden, and I'm 14 years old. In the later months of summer, I went camping with my girlfriend Leah and my aunt, which we were planning to do since before summer started. We were traveling to a locally known campground, and we were going to stay there in a trailer that my aunt's husband owns. We left around 6 p.m. because the drive took around an hour and a half, and because the campground was way out in the sticks, of course. When we got there, we parked in the parking lot outside the wooded area and took our tents, snacks, and other camping necessities. The trailer was located in a large clearing in the woods, and it's actually a very nice trailer. It's relatively new, spacey, and has a living room, a mini kitchen, a bathroom, and even three bedrooms. The sun would shine greatly in the clearing, creating some nice scenery for photos. On the first day, everything went normal. Me and my girlfriend spent a lot of time watching TV. My aunt took photos of both the area and us, and we had a very nice dinner, since my aunt is a wonderful cook. Everything went downhill fast on the second day, though. It was a cloudy day, but it wasn't raining, which we were thankful for. There were also barely any animals prowling the area. I saw one deer and maybe a few birds, but that was about it. Leah figured there might be a predator in the area. Fast forwarding to the evening, we were sitting by the river, which was a 30 second walk from our trailer. My aunt was telling us a story that I can't quite remember when all of a sudden we heard some sticks cracking and leaves rustling from the other side of the river. Is that a bear? Leah asked. I heard a slight amount of fear in her voice when she said that, as she's afraid of bears. But my aunt said the sounds were too light for a bear, so I thought it might be a deer or something. That's when we heard the most blood-curdling shriek any of us have ever heard erupt from the other side of the river. I could feel the hair on the back of my neck stand up, and Leah jumped back in fear. The scream, it itched my brain in a way I could never describe. It was so human, yet so animal-like at the same time. All three of us noped the hell out of there and ran back to the trailer, the whole time hearing screaming coming from the river as we were running. We quickly gathered our belongings, stuffed them in the large duffel bag that we had brought, and ran back to the car. When we broke out of the woods, we jumped into the car, locked the doors, and took a deep breath. What the hell was that? Leah exclaimed. None of us could even begin to explain what we just heard. We disagreed to go back home and forget the whole thing ever happened. We pulled out of the lot and drove down the road back home. I decided to look one last time at the woods when we were driving away, and I swear to you, I saw a tall black figure with glowing white eyes just staring outside of the edge of the tree line, looking right at me. It shook me to my damn core, and I haven't been able to forget about the image since. It's October 18th currently, at the time I'm writing this, and I still haven't told my girlfriend or even my aunt about what I saw. My aunt's husband went up to the trailer to see what he could find though, and he found his trailer practically in ruins. I don't believe in skinwalkers or the paranormal or anything, but what happened at that campground definitely changed my mind a little about some things. This happened just two weeks ago when we moved into our new house, so I remember it all very clearly. We bought the house very cheap from a guy named Jake. My older brother and I thought he was a bit creepy, but we didn't care. Our new house has three bedrooms, two bathrooms, a living room, a kitchen, and a basement. Right from the beginning, the basement gave me the creeps because of this horrible smell. We all took notice of it and wanted to check it out, but we decided not to and just hoped that the smell would go away by itself. Some hours passed and I was about to go to bed, when suddenly I hear thumping sounds from the basement. I wanted to check it out, so I took my phone and turned the flashlight on. I opened the basement door and waited for around 10 seconds before going down there. On my way down the stairs, I suddenly realized the thumping sound completely stopped. So now I was ready to panic. 
So I made a quick decision and rushed back to my room. I went to sleep and I went on about my day the very next day with no more thumping sounds until the next night. Now I was really close to panicking again. And just like last time, I wanted to check it out, so I left my room. Just as I closed the door to my room, my brother came out of his room because he also heard the thumping sound. I was glad he was hearing it too, as I kind of thought I was going crazy and was starting to hear things. Although it might have been a lot less scary to hear things that aren't there, than to go through what we went through that night. This time, we both went down to the basement. On our way down the stairs, the thumping continued. When we got to the bottom of the stairs, the first thing that we noticed was a door that we actually never knew about. It was kind of hard to see because it was nearly the same color as the wall and it blended in quite well. Anyways, we decided to open the door to see what was behind it. We looked for a light switch, but apparently there was no light in the room. So we took out our phones and turned on our flashlights and what we found was disturbing. On the floor, we found two dead bodies. We both wanted to scream, but something prevented us from it. We were so focused that we never realized that the thumping had stopped until we heard this heavy sigh from behind us. We turned around and saw a grown man that was wearing a mask and he was carrying a knife. My brother and I wasted no time at all and we jolted out of there as fast as we possibly could. We managed to escape him and to lock the door behind us, which in turn locked him down in the basement. We woke our parents up and told them everything. They called the cops and they arrived after only five minutes. There were two police cars and three officers. We showed them to the basement and when we finally made it down there, we saw that the man had removed his mask. It was Jake, the man who lived in the home before us that sold us the house. One of the police officers took Jake and we showed the two other officers the dead bodies. We later found out that Jake told the police that the people he killed was his ex-girlfriend and her new boyfriend, and that he had planned to leave their bodies in the basement, and therefore probably blame us for killing them. The scariest thing to me about this situation was, how did he break into our house, and what else was he going to do? We have so many unanswered questions that we will probably never get an answer to. Jake was sentenced to a minimum of 20 years in prison. As far as I know, he may even have a life sentence, hopefully without the chance of parole. I don't think we need somebody like him roaming out in society. As far as I'm concerned, they might as well give him the death penalty. My family and I will never forget about this, that's for sure. James scarred us all for life. This incident occurred in 2019. I live in Northern Ontario, Canada in a semi-rural area. It was around 5 p.m. and I was eagerly awaiting my son's arrival for a visit. I have a shared custody agreement with his mother. I have a standard poodle who is not a scary dog by any means, but she does her job by barking as soon as anyone walks down her road, let alone walks into our property. So when she starts barking, I naturally assume my ex is pulled into the driveway with my son and I make my way out to greet them. Only it wasn't her car. Rather it was a middle-aged, disheveled looking man with long stringy gray hair and eyes with pupils as big as saucers who was creeping around my house. When he caught sight of me, I could tell he was nervous. To give you a visual, I'm a rather intimidating looking guy. I have long hair, a full beard, and I've had friends that tell me I look like a serial killer, hence my nickname, Serial Miller. The guy starts stammering, saying, oh, I was just wondering if you needed any pruning done. I could do it for you. Even though it's late in the season, I'm just trying to make some extra money on the side. I politely declined, and fortunately, the guy left. My ex arrived with my son shortly after and told me she saw a guy who was, and I quote, twitching out, and advised me to keep our son inside for at least a little while. I of course did just that. 
Even if I hadn't gotten that extra piece of information, I have a visual disability, so I could not see his twitching movements from a distance. But what I could see of him gave me the creeps. I called the cops and I advised them to be on the lookout. I also posted my encounter on our local Concerned Citizens Facebook group, and when I did, I was informed that I was not the only one who had an encounter with the pruner man. That's what they called him. I shudder to think how different the circumstances would have been had my son encountered him before I did. I hope this guy is caught and arrested, and provided with mental health support, or help to find some honest work. In an update on the pruner man, it turns out that this guy is a part of a gang who commits break and enterings in and around my neighborhood. The gang sends one person to scope out a potential target home, then they send in a group to break into the house. I'm happy to report they have not shown up here and I think it's because of my loud hypervigilant poodle. 